Here we go, we're live. Can you guys say hi? Hi. Good job. Can you see yourself, Addy? Take it like that, we don't have to glare. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we will just let a few of you guys jump on here with us. I know some of you have said that it takes you a few minutes to get the notification, so we will give you a couple minutes to sign on. And once you're here, if you can wave or say hello, let us know you're watching, that would be awesome. If you're new here, then welcome. Thanks for being here. My name is Lindsay. This is my husband, Jess, and these are Two of our daughters, Mackenzie and Addison Gopal. And Addison Gopal, yeah. <laughs> so normally Mackenzie and Addison Gopal are babysat by their Gigi on Tuesday nights, but Gigi had other plans for tonight. So we have got these ladies here with us and we are going to chat about the last 30 minutes before showtime what you should be doing and that question was sent in to us by Anne Marie from Texas who sent this question through to our YouTube channel so that was awesome YouTube channel. um Mackenzie Lacey is saying what a beautiful drawing that you've done I don't know if they can oh it's you know what it's probably backwards do you want to tell them what, what does it, it says? say it says go saints but it's kind of backwards <laughs> It's, what are the saints? Well, uh, school. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much, that is. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. Daddy, no touching my son. School mascot. Go saints. School mascot. <laughs> Thank you, Mama. Yep. Mm -mm. Okay, so um, we're gonna chat about the last thirty minutes before showtime. Um, if you have a question that you would like to submit for a future live, you can send that in to us at hayescofellph at gmail.com. Mama, it's so boring. Are you ready to go inside now? <laughs> no. Okay. It's actually not so boring. Okay. Um, and what else do we have to say? We have our feeders, our corner feeders are in stock. So some of you guys have been waiting for those. They are in stock. I will post the link with um, the caption text here, but you might've seen already today that I made a post about them. They are available on our website under the tack shop button. And um, if you have any questions about those, we're happy to answer those maybe after we do this um, 30 minutes before showtime. And the other thing that I wanted to just let you know very quickly is that the doors for Momentum, our online coaching program are open right now. We're taking on 10, um, 10 new riders into that program. So if you think that you would like to have some more coaching support from us, rather than this, this style where we're sitting and um, answering questions, it's actually videos, instructional videos, and we're demonstrating things, and we have some um, some non-professional riders doing some demonstration, and we have audio lessons and riding plans and all kinds of things in there. Amazing community, and uh, right now the focus is on breaking down ranch riding, AQHA ranch riding pattern one. If you think you wanna get some more info on that, you can let me know, or you can check that out at the link that is posted with this live. Mackenzie's the big sister and I'm the little sister. That's right. Mackenzie's the big sister and you're the little sister. <laughs> okay, so um, Anne-Marie wanted to talk about uh, 30 minutes before sh show time. What should I be using? What should I be doing to make the best use of my time? And uh, we had some thoughts on that. If you have further questions as we go along, you can um, drop those in the comment box. We'll try to get to them live. If we don't get to them live, we will come back after the fact and try to make sure that all of your questions do get answered. Do you want to start with some of the things that you think people should do or not do? And Anne Marie, I don't know Anne Marie personally, but she um, did say non pros for us non pros to do, and it did sound like she's a rainer. So that's kind of how we're answering this question. I'm gonna start with the do's or the don'ts. <laughs> Start with a do. I think from I don't know how many years I've been coaching, the biggest thing that I see that people need to do right before they go in the show pen is keep moving with a purpose. It doesn't have to be fast, doesn't have to be the maneuvers. It actually shouldn't be the maneuvers themselves, but 
keep moving with a purpose and keep getting that horse mentally mentally prepared to be in his best behavior. I think at the bigger shows, it's quite a bit easier. You know, everybody's kind of been there, done that. When we talk about the smaller shows is we see so many people want to sit around and watch the person in front of them or they, you know, just want to watch a few runs and then all of a sudden they realize they're the next ones in and their horse is out in La La Land. Standing with the herd. Yeah, they're herd bound, they're in La La Land. Um, well, sometimes the riders are in La La Land too. <laughs> it's a lot about just keeping motion, keep keep the legs warmed up, keep the brain warmed up, and keep them focused on what we want to do. Um, a lot of the horses, right before I show them, I like a lot of hip on my horses, the ability to move their hips over a lot. For me, that's a big one. So I, as right before I go show in, I'm gonna counter bend them a little bit, push their hips around, um, maybe step them around in a right, like a right turn where their hip is really cocked in. They're not spinning, they're really arced into the inside. And I'm gonna work on their hips and I've taught them at home, the more I focus on your hips, the more I get your legs moving, the more you focus into that bridle and get serious. Um, so I think that's a big one for me is keep them moving. You don't want to focus on the maneuvers. You want to focus on getting their brain to say, yes, sir, every couple seconds. You know, yes, sir, I will move my feet. Yes, sir, I will give you my chin. And I think that's the biggest one for the non-pros when they're starting out is they think of it as, is my horse spinning well? Is my horse stopping well? Is my horse... Um, doing the maneuvers by the time you've gotten to 20 minutes before showtime you better know you have the maneuvers what you want to do is set them up and say okay if if I pick on their hip maybe a little bit if I have a horse that's maybe a little sluggish in the hip and I pick on that hip a little bit and he says yes sir to me 10 times when I go in that show pen whatever I ask him to do he is going to say yes sir um, so for me, the biggest one is keeping the non-pros just moving, just taking that face, moving that belly, you know, getting those back legs moving wherever I need them to be. That's the biggest one I always encourage people to do and do myself, try to. Okay, I'm going to pitch in with a don't. Don't ignore arena etiquette and start running people over and or or just not know not you know not be aware of arena etiquette um and kind of get yourself into a fight with somebody or just don't be ignorant in that warm-up pen i think it's important to understand what the etiquette is in the warm-up pen sometimes it's a very small area and um you want to know what is expected of you and your horse when you're in that space so that you can utilize that space without interfering with um other people that are trying to get ready so definitely I heard a good saying for that the other day it was nobody remembers how you placed they do remember how you treated them at the horse show yeah and that warm-up pen is for sure i mean we've heard it all we hear it all the time somebody will be getting ready and they start talking about oh so and so was out there you know, warming his horse up, cutting people off, or, you know, just being ignorant. And I think that's the thing that people will remember more than anything. Well, and I think, like, for non-pros, you know, like, we're talking about non-pros kind of generally about all my professionals, but for Green Rainers specifically, people that are showing for, you know, the first time or haven't been showing for very long, it can be really nerve-wracking if you don't know what the etiquette is and you get in somebody's way. So... You know there's one side of it which is like don't be the ignorant person but then the other side of it is like don't be don't be the person who gets rattled whose nerves got rattled right before you go in because you just didn't know the etiquette you know know the etiquette so that you know where you're supposed to be so that you don't get in somebody's way but so that that's know. not one more thing to make you nervous right before you go in because 
there's a lot of things to be nervous about when you haven't shown very much or when you're showing for the first time and you don't want it to be immediately before you go in getting run over by somebody or, or by accident running into somebody. You know, if somebody lines up to go to a run-in pattern and you walk in front of them or something, you don't want that. And um, if you accidentally do, just be polite about it. Say you're sorry, back away. Yeah. I think the big thing that we see um, especially in the green is grass level there'll be a bunch that don't have trainers some that do have trainers some trainers that haven't prepared their non pros properly for that non or form of etiquette but if you don't know just ask yeah um you know i always tell everybody before you go show at a horse show go watch one watch the warm-up pens here just get to see everything and then if you don't quite know there's nothing wrong you know if you just find a trainer who is not working you know is not helping the next person in the pen again be polite and simply ask them you know hey can you just explain this to me real quick um, you know and I think that's a big a big part of the etiquette is just uh, remember that there's other people that are showing also and you know, and you can stay focused on your own horses. You can still do stuff. You can still make them move around. But you do have to be mindful that everybody is there for the same reason. Another don't. I'll do another don't. One of the things, and you, you touched on this, but I think it's helpful to really paint a picture with this. Is a, what a lot of people will do is stand still at the end gate watching their class and have a drink or you know be taking a really long time tucking their shirt in or some people have a cigarette or talk to their friend or sit there and I think it's important to go through your pattern I think it's important to go through your um you know kind of whatever your little routine is to get yourself ready but not to be standing still and um, just sitting there right before you go in. Well, Keeping and if you horse... do need to do something where you need to go stand for a second, go off to the side. Yeah. Stay out of people's way. <coughs> and do it so that you're not doing that in the last few minutes right before you go in. Like, you know, we're talking about the last 30 minutes before we go in, but the routine before we go in actually starts a couple hours before you go in, a couple hours before you anticipate um, being the one in the ring. Another don't that I think some show horse people have been accused of is don't try on your new shirt right before you go in the show pen. Don't try on new chaps. Don't, don't do anything new. Yeah. <laughs> no. Don't try on a new pair of boots on your horse. Like, don't, don't try downing a whole bottle of water because last time um, <laughs> your mouth got dry and you couldn't cluck. You don't want to go in there with a full bottle of water in your belly it's amazing how many people especially when they start out they'll be nervous you know they want to buy you know they want to try you know oh, i got a new shirt i'm going to show and it's like, well, that's wonderful but try that thing on the night before make sure it works you know try your new chaps on that's great you got a new pair you want to show them off but those aren't things for 30 minutes before the show pen 30 no. minutes before the show pen are everything needs focused to be on that horse yeah how are you going to make him say yes sir or yes ma'am for everything you're going to do in that two and a half minutes here in the show pen and all the other stuff needs to be done way way ahead of time we um, as a rule have a bit of a routine that we go through with our customers and ourselves when we show um, and every horse is a little different. We have to cater a little bit to the horses. But about four horses before somebody goes in the show pen, we have a bit of a pit crew. We bring the horse out away from the warm-up pen. Um, if I'm coaching, we usually have a towel and a, and a tail brush duct in tape. my back pocket. Duct tape. Um, we use the duct tape in the front of our hats. We roll it backwards so that it's sticky and helps everybody keep their hats on. Um, some people like hairspray. Whatever your routine is, that's fine. But about four or five horses, depending on the horse, 
we do a bit of a pit crew. Um, you know, wipe down their sides, wipe down their mouth, wipe down, you know, a little bit of your boots if they're dirty, pull your chaps down, do your tail, last minute, okay, this is what you need to do. And I think it's so important that you get into a routine that you're comfortable with. Um, I mean, I've had a few people over the years when they went to a show and we weren't there where they kind of said it just didn't feel right because they, they weren't in that routine. Um, you know, you, you get comfort in that routine. You find out what works for your horse. Some horses you need to do a little further out so you can be loping them right before you go in the pen. Um, you know, and that pit crew stop for us doesn't take 10 minutes. It's a couple of minutes. It's, <coughs> I mean, it's a NASCAR pit crew. You pull, know. Yeah, pull the tail out, make sure you got a number sure. on, check everything real quick. If somebody ne needs a little duct tape for their hat, I don't sit there and pull it off and wind it up as they're waiting. That thing's in my hand as they come over. I hand it to them, give me your hat or they can do it. Boom, I got the tail. I can talk to them while I'm doing their tail. Um, and then the same thing, as soon as we're done, they're back to jogging. Depending on the warm up pen, might be loping. But just give getting that horse to come back to me or the, or the person riding it. For me, the biggest one is they have to just be comfortable. Horses have to be comfortable. They have to be saying, yes, sir, yes, ma'am. And you want them walking in the pen alert, but comfortable. And, you, and that's something you need to find out, you know, months beforehand when you're working in your arena, how much prep time does that horse need? Do they need, you know, an hour of work in the morning? Do they need... You know, some horses show better at 10 minutes, but that you have to cater to each horse. Most of the horses that I show are quite young. Um, so we ride them in the middle of the night at the horse shows because that's the only time we get in the pen. Then we take them out about 10 horses before, which is a little over an hour. We do a fair bit of just jogging and just give me more chin, give me more belly, move them around. You know, we bring them up. Um, for me, I like to have my chaps on, you know, seven, eight horses ahead of time, um, you know, and then right before I go in, a couple horses, give me a little hunk of duct tape, you know, do the tail, wipe them down, and let's go. Do you have any weird um, habits that you do? I don't have any, I don't think, I, well, are you going to bring some up? I don't, <laughs> well, I'm thinking the last time was, you really showed, Bob, really showed, you were really pregnant, so the habit was, what do you need, dear? <laughs> a lot of pee breaks, yeah. Um, a lot of adjusting of I don't feel like I have anything where I'm really superstitious. I have things that I prefer doing in a certain order, like I, I prefer to not wear my hat when I'm warming up. Um, I, I prefer to, you know, kind of do the work, do the warming up, get my horse ready to go. And then, and I can do that with chaps on or without. That part doesn't really matter to me, but I want everything else pretty much set. If it's really, really hot, I might do it without my shirt on, like my, my show shirt and put that on. <laughs> a shirt, I will be wearing that. a shirt, but not my show <laughs> shirt until, you know, right before I go on, I might put that on, but it'll, it'll be for sure a shirt that I've worn before that I know it's gonna tuck in, it's gonna stay tucked in. I already have my, you know, my belt on, I already have everything else kind of set to go. Just throw that last minute stuff on. I have to have duct tape on my hat. Um, but I like to do that, you know, two, three draws before I go in. Um, I think another big don't that we didn't touch upon is don't watch other people schooling their horses. Show the horse you have, prepare the horse you have. Yeah. You know, some of the shows we go to, there'll be everybody there from the best in the world, you know, to the beginners at the show. And if you start watching all the big open riders with big fancy horses and you're sitting there going, boy, I need faster, I need, you know, deeper, I need, you know, I need this thing working harder. If you do that at the last 30 minutes, you're going to blow that thing up. If you prepare the horse you have, show the horse you have, you will have the best score that horse can give you. But if you start watching other people, and that goes a couple days ahead of time, that's just not 30, 30 minutes in advance. 
however you have trained that horse at home, you better stick with it so that, that horse has the confidence, he knows the game plan, nothing's changed. If you want to change something, go after the show, go home, you know, hey, I watched, you know, John Doe, you know, doing this. I'm going to try that a little bit, but don't do it, you know, 30 minutes. Do not change what that horse is doing. Don't change what he knows. Even if you think it might work, if he has not done it at home, do not change it when they go to a show. The horses are not as comfortable as they are at home. They're already a little bit alert. They will get scared, and then you got to do a whole lot of fixing before you show that horse again to his ability. Stick to your game plan. Yeah, and I think in the last 30 minutes before you go in, you don't want to be looking at, like if you're it's early in the season right now so we're not really thinking this way but if you're in a situation where you're going for points you're going for year end you're going for you know and and you're listening for scores to kind of see how you're sitting or I think you don't need to do that in the last 30 minutes I think you need to just be focused like you're saying you need to just be focused on your own horse your own game making that the best you possibly can if you're lucky enough that you have a coach that's kind of keeping their head out for you they'll usually say something like whatever you do don't go off pattern or you know th they'll kind of help you out with that part um as far as the strategy with scoring and stuff goes but i think the last 30 minutes you don't want to be distracted and try and getting yourself psyched out um i feel like that that is a mistake that people make is getting too too torqued out listening to the score for the person ahead of them and you know it doesn't matter at that point it doesn't matter you need to go in and just ride the horse that you have and ride the horse you have that day i think that's another one yeah you know we see so many people this horse can score a 73 well if he's off and he's just not mentally there don't try to run him at a 73 you're gonna blow his brain up a little bit and then have mm -hmm. to come back and fix it and fixing mm -hmm. it takes way longer yeah um you know hopefully you have a good coach who can watch and understand what that horse is kind of going to do to you you know if you need to school on them a little bit or you need to show them or wherever you need to be and that's knowing what you're up against so Lacey's saying my strategy is trying to be around Jess who seems to always have something funny to say in the warm-up pen which helps my nerves big time I'm glad it does Lacey I I and I, well, I guess that's another one. Too, I hate it. For the coach. I hate the joking oh, yeah. around. Don't joke around with me before I go in. I'm trying to focus. Don't break my focus. But that's the I thing. Think that's that's the thing you have though, to know. Better. Some people need that, you know, to get out of their head. I don't need to get it. I need to just do my own thing. No, no more jokes. And that's one of the things from the coach's Shoot. point of view. You can tell certain people need to smile just a little bit. Um, you know, you can tell when somebody's getting just a little nervous. You can tell when somebody's getting into that train of thought of like, oh my God, what have I done? You oh, know, I was thinking way like, past that. The, oh my effing God, what's going <laughs> to happen? <laughs> and they just need to chill out a little bit. Yeah. Or we've had a few people over the years where they show better. Like if we needed big runs out, they even show better if maybe they're a little bit off their game or a little mad. Lindsay definitely shows better when everybody's just happy and quiet and let her do her deal. Yeah, just and everybody leave me alone before I go in. And that's, that's something like. that you need to not only know from, like from the coaching mm -hmm. point of view, we have to figure that out pretty quick with the customers. Mm -hmm. From your friend's point of view, if you're trying to focus and they're all coming up to you because it's a horse show and they're kind of having a bit of a party and you know woohoo good luck and whatever you know maybe you just kind of need to stay away like you got to figure out what you yeah. need in them 30 minutes um well, we're walking through the water yeah we have some clients to do better with one or the other of us you know we try to always have you know some, some people, people do like better with you some people do better with me right at the gate right at the last minute everybody's different yeah, and it definitely needs to be figured out. You know, you're not going to get a game plan. Like tonight, we're not going to figure out anybody's 30-minute game plan before a show. Mm -hmm. 
but you have to figure out what your horse needs, what you need. Hopefully those are line up a little bit. Um, and get into the routine. Sometimes, um, well, like we've talked on some of the lives about different bits, where I might change a bit right before I show. Now, I also know that horse a lot. I'm not just switching bits just for the fun of it. But if I know that horse and I know that changing a piece of equipment will make him go, oh, what's this? Um, you know, I've had some horses where I warmed them up in different spurs and then showed them in something different. And, you know, knowing that for customers is important too, to what we can do. You just gotta find your routine. For me, my biggest one is I just don't like it when it's not a routine. I have to know. Um, what the heck? I lost the comments here. Did you lose it? Yeah, I can't see the comments now. Are we still I, I on? think my finger's cold. <gasps> no. Are we on? Yeah, we're, we're still on. on. I just can't see comments. For some reason hmm. so for that. me i definitely have i like routine which is odd because i ride babies a lot um so things have to sometimes be modified at the last minute um you do not like anybody doing your polo wraps no you don't nobody like nobody else, else does them right you don't so like, like okay <laughs> don't like anybody else putting your number on you don't like like all that stuff you you just would rather even tacking up you'd rather just put your own saddle on put your own pad on put your like mm -hmm. you'd rather when just i go do to all show i like to yourself. just do it myself um you know if i'm showing multiple horses in a class sometimes i have to have other people walk them around and stuff but yeah i'm really big on i want to know they're wrapped a certain way i want to know show head stalls are on certain ways um I get comfort in checking all that stuff over and being like, okay, I know, I can't tell you how many times I've been at a horse show and somebody rides by me, I'll be standing there coaching, somebody else rides by and I see a bad wrap job that's gonna come undone when they're showing. Um, we have a bag that we carry with us up to the arena, just a little show bag. Mm -hmm. And in there, you know, we always have elastics, duct tape, vet wrap, um, there's some Chicago screws. There's always four or five extra curb straps. Um, you know, anything that can go wrong, I want to be able to fix so that it's not a big ordeal. And that's always been my thing with that show bag. You know, it, it kind of looks like there's a bunch of junk in the bottom, but that junk, you know, when you're looking for Chicago screws and I can grab one quick, mm -hmm. And lots of times, not just our customers, lots of people at the show, right before they go in their show, you know, let's say their show bridle pops a Chicago screw. Yeah, or we don't whatever. even use Chicago screws, but you got some in there. And <clears throat> you can fix somebody's problem so that it's not, oh, run to my trail or run back to my tax stall. It's just fix the problem. Know you, know you are taken care of if something goes wrong. Mm -hmm. um, I think almost everybody's had a Chicago screw on their chaps come undone. I don't, that happens lots of times. So anytime that happens, if you can fix it, you know it. Um, somebody, you know, curb straps are a big one where, you know, lots of people don't maybe know the rules from the different associations. And I always try to have one of almost every kind of curb strap there so that if somebody, and not just our customers, but if something goes wrong, boom it, it's fixed immediately done and that to me in the last 30 minutes is stuff that you can find comfort in if you know that okay it's taken mm, noise no i can't get the comments back want to do it today do i have to oh, help you there with we go my... got it so if you guys have any questions um we're happy to answer those now if you're watching the replay and you have questions you can leave those and we'll try to get back to you and get those questions answered um 
Kathy's saying it always helped Olivia too. Yeah. The joking around. Is that what you mean, Kathy? Yeah. And I think, so the biggest parts with that last 30 minutes is know what it takes to prepare your horse. You know, does he need long trotting? Mm -hmm. Does he need his face lifted up? And for me, that's where most horses are. I, I need that chin. I need that hips, um, you know, side to side where I know that horse is going to give me those hawks when I go to change leads. I know that horse is going to give me his hawks and, and come into that turn properly. The young horses, that's where they're going to fault a little bit on because they don't know the routine of what's in the show pen. They're a little mm -hmm. bit lost. They don't know where they're going. So my routine on a three-year-old is a lot of, you know, making their legs move side to side and them just being very focused on my legs and hand. Um, I don't, I hardly spin them, but I do a lot of moving them side to side. I don't run them down and throw them into the ground a bunch. You know, I mean, I'll stop them, I'll spin them, but I'm not trying to get that plus turnaround out in the warm-up pen and then by the time I walk into the show pen, they're burnt out. I want to get them just saying, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. And then go into that show pen and they can do the maneuvers that I've taught them over the last, you know, year or two. Do I work on those routines Lacey's saying, home? do I work, do you work on those routines at home? So do you work on that, like, the last couple minutes before you go in when you're at home? Yeah, all the time. I'll do it at least once a week where I'll really make them focus, you know, when I'm putting those hips to the side and really lifting that chin up. At least once a week, I'll take them as hard as I possibly can where they can mentally handle it. Because I think when you, if you do it just at home, and you, or sorry, just at the show, and you never do it at home, it's something new for the horse that he's never had done yet. Now he's concerned he's scared he doesn't it's know new. the routine yeah. so if I can teach them every day they do it a little bit but once a week I try to really um, like today I, I got after one of our three-year-olds and did that quite hard with them where likely harder than I ever would at a show but I was quite happy with them because the more I pushed into him and made him do a lot of sideways motion with his legs the more he got very focused on me and that's where the training comes in, and that's what you're trying to get them to do. And by hard, you don't mean like, because this is something that people kind of get mixed up with too. You don't mean like kicking and pulling super hard. You mean getting him to focused. getting him to lift his belly as much as he can, getting him to side pass as much as he can, like getting him getting mm -hmm. his body freed up. It doesn't mean like, you know, kick on him and pull on him, and you know. I don't know, hurt no, him but or when pull I his side face off or him, something. Like I made him trot Run hard to the, the side arena. when yeah. he, more than I would at a horse show, so that I know where his level of handling that is. Yeah. So that I don't scare them at the horse show. And then if I can take them to, you know, let's say an eight out of 10 as far as that workload goes, and then I bring it down to a six to go show them, they think the world's wonderful. They, they you know, this is way easier than at home, but the yeah. rules are still the same. Um, you know, whichever way I'm going to, if it's a walk-in pattern with a spin, I'm going to do a lot of counter bending that other way right before I walk in that show pen. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, for me, that's just a habit. I want them focused on that hip to that one side, um, so that I know they're walking in there. I don't want them thinking so hard that when I get to center, they're looking over there trying to get ahead of me but the second I move my hand I do want them to look over and go gotcha I know where this is going um, routines that I have is I I keep moving I'm always moving my horse but I will <laughs> I take my finger and I have to actually look and focus where in that arena okay I want to stop over here so I run that pattern and I'll just I'll do this with my fingers you know four spins right circle big big small boom 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 and if you need to do that to, to learn your pattern you need to do that six hours before you did that but I do it as okay in, in my brain where do I need to be do I need to be 
30 feet off of the walls. Is the ground getting bad out in the best spot? Where do I need to move? Like just little stuff like that. And those are my routines. Um, and those evolve. Like I feel like you don't start out as a green rainer with like, with this kind of routine. You know, you it evolves as you go. You're not gonna mm -hmm. start out you know, doing that and figuring out what the ground is at all your stops and stuff. You're not gonna start out that way. That's gonna evolve as you go. That's why you need good help. I think some of the ones that show with us or have over the years showed with us quite a bit too. It's funny how you get used to their habits. We're like, you know, okay. You can tell when one of them's nervous or you can tell when one of them's... Yeah. Yeah. Okay, you know, he's gonna ask for a bottle of water three ahead or, yeah. you know, something like that. Yeah. And having those routines is a great thing yeah i gotta remember to take her water bottle off the back of her saddle or like all that stuff gee who are you talking about yeah. well <laughs> there's a couple but you're one of them <laughs> there's some routines that are great to get into and those develop over time mm -hmm. i do agree with that mm -hmm. i know for myself mapping out that pattern keeping that horse's hips moving around i don't need to practice a million lead changes, a million stops, and a little whatever. I need them to think hawks over, chin in, and to me, that's everything. A um, little different in the ranch riding. Um, I will still do the same warm up, but I won't get them so focused. You know, I need them a little freer out there, so I'm not going to get them so focused, but I still need them to move their hawks over. And in the ranch riding, I will definitely incorporate a lot more long trotting because that is something that with the rainers doing the ranch riding, they struggle with a little bit. You know, they're always trying to lope. So there's a different warm up in the ranch riding where I'm still going to move their hocks over. I'm still going to do a lot of side passing and moving over, but I'm also going to put a whole bunch of long trotting in there and let them know, hey, it's okay. You're okay to come up here and long trot. As we're with a rainer, we don't want them to trot. I mean, we're not, you know, in the show pen, it's always a two-point penalty. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I'll incorporate that little bit more in there. Let them trot out there a little more. Okay. I think we have answered these questions. But if you guys have more questions, just leave them here for us. And we'll get to them later on, maybe tomorrow. Um feeders are in i said that at the beginning feeders are in if you guys have any questions about those feeders let us know um and momentum is open the doors to momentum are open right now we're taking on 10 riders um and if you have questions about our online coaching program just let me know um i know some of you have not heard about it yet so if you have questions about that let me know the link for that to get some more info is momentum hcph.com there's a bunch of information in there but i am happy to talk to you about it and see if you think it would be the right fit it's a really great group that's in there we want to try to keep um keep the riders in there that are riding consistently and ready to participate in um the community with lots of positivity and just um you know really utilizing that that content that is in there that um coaching content that is in there so if you think that might be the right fit, shoot me a message and I will get you the rest of the info on that. I can answer those questions and we can get you set up inside of there before we close it down. And what else did we have? Um, we have not, somebody asked about babies. We have not had any more falls yet. We're waiting uh, really any time for one more and then we have another one coming in a couple weeks, maybe sooner than that. Yeah, the one's a little overdue now, isn't she? Yeah. I guess she's not really over. She's just not. She's due. She's due. She needs to get it out. Yeah. Okay, thanks for being here with us tonight, you guys. We uh, we decided to change up our scenery. We're just outside of actually the front doors to our house, so you got to see the, the sunset. So our faces are maybe a little bit dark, but at least you got that beautiful sunset there. So thanks for watching. We'll catch you next week. Oh, next week... Are you going to ask me what we're talking about next week? I always do. <laughs> you always do, and I actually wrote it down this time. <laughs> you make it sound like it's a bad thing. I just want to be informed. I can never remember. If I don't write something down these days, I cannot remember it.
I wrote it down today. You want to know what it is? Yes, please. Please tell me since you're just dying to know the answer. Thanks for asking. Next week, we're talking about how to make center feel comfortable. So Anne-Marie also asked this question, how to make the middle feel comfortable for a horse. So what she's talking about there is in a reining pattern, if you're not a reiner, in a reining pattern, so many things happen right at center. Um, lead changes, speed changes, spins, all kinds of things, and the horses often get kind of nervous or jumpy or angry, downright angry at center, and she's asking how to make it feel comfortable. So we are going to talk about that next week on Tuesday at 7.30. I think it's not just center for the rainers. I mean, pleasure horses get that, you know, every, every, every horse gets show pen anxious in their own ways. Oh, just okay, you can cover every discipline then. I'll cover raining. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean it like that. I just meant it's not... <laughs> That'll be a long live. Oh, there'd be a whole lot of disciplines I have not a clue about. Yeah. There's days I'm not even sure I have a clue about raining anymore. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's let these people go. We'll talk to you guys next week. If you have any questions about feeders or momentum or anything else we have going on, just shoot me a message. Have a good night. Good night.